Are you new to reloading and gunsmithing? Are you a little bit confused about calipers? Well today, we're going to solve that problem. We're going to take a look at some dial calipers and some digital calipers here. Explain the differences between the two and how to use them. So stick around. Welcome back to Clover Tech, where we chain fire freedom. I'm Chris Dover, and today we have a, uh, a viewer request. Going to shoot a little video here for uh, Brent, who is new at reloading. Uh, had some questions that he had sent us uh, asking about uh, dial calipers, digital calipers, the difference in between the two, which were superior, that sort of thing. And we're going to try and answer some of those questions today. And today we got some brass off to the side. We've got a, a piece of 308 here and a piece of 44 special. Uh, nothing important, just gonna use those to uh, do some test measurements on here with these. And the calipers are very important for uh, gunsmiths and reloaders, uh, but predominantly are used in the machining world, of course. Now the digital and the dial caliper have quite a few uh, features that they share with the, the primary exception of the readout. The digital caliper obviously being a digital readout, the dial caliper having a, uh, a dial readout similar to a, uh, to a clock. One thing to keep in mind when we're dealing with calipers is uh, everything just about that you learned in wood shop, with the exception of uh, measuring twice, take that, ball it up, throw it out the window. Uh, when we're dealing with uh, gunsmithing, reloading, that sort of thing. We're primarily talking uh, precision uh, machinist measurements and those are going to be done in thousandths of an inch, not in inches. So um, everything is going to be pretty much in, in multiples of 10. It's going to be very similar even though we are talking about thousandths of an inch. It's going to be real similar to the metric system. So now we get into common features and we've got our, uh, got our jaws here which are the same. We'll look at the, uh, the digital first here. And when I open these up, the, the digital readout's gonna come on automatically. See how it came on there when I, when I opened it. This set of jaws is for measuring the OD, okay? The outside diameter. So you put your, uh, whatever you're gonna measure, put in there like so, close it in around it, it's gonna measure the OD. This little uh, uh, set of jaws here, and I don't know if it'll fit, it should, will measure the ID like so. And that's gonna be the same on both. They also have their little ruler readout here. Um, this is very important on the dial caliper because you'll need to use it. You do not have the display, okay? Um, it's also helpful, and the reason they put it on your digital calipers is to make sure that you're at least close on your digital display. If uh, this, for example, was reading uh, you know, 500 thousandths and you were only reading 25 thousandths on uh, uh, the little uh, ruler here, then you would know that something was up and that they needed to be calibrated or uh, possibly the electronics inside was bad. Maybe you were getting some interference. So you've got a little wheel here and uh, that's, that's how you move it. You can also grab it. You've got a little place here you can grab and a wheel to move it back and forth. That's common amongst both sets. And then another thing that's common is your lock. This is what locks it down. Once you get the measurement you want, you twist this and notice I can't move them, so I'm locked. So if you were dealing with a situation to where you were checking, uh, let's say the size of your brass, uh, you would measure it like so, then you would lock it down. And then you could take all subsequent rounds of brass and just run it through there and make sure that one of them was not larger than the other. Uh, in other words, you could set a, uh, a a maximum here where this would be the maximum length. Those that were longer, you know you need to trim them. And you see how it has the, the readout there. We've got a button that we can hit and it zeroes it. Uh, they often get off when you, when you close them. I do not uh, particularly care for, I've got these just for quick measurements, but I don't really care for the digital. Uh, to answer the question real quickly on which I think is superior, I think the dial is superior. You're not dealing with electronics, you're not dealing with batteries, you don't have uh, uh, an issue possibly with any type of interference. So uh, that's why I prefer the uh, just the standard 
dial calipers, they're a little more expensive usually, dial calipers are, and that, uh, that tells you a little something about they're usually better quality. Uh, also, any machinist that's, uh, that's worth his uh, weight in scrap metal, let's say, uh, is probably using dial calipers. They're probably not using a, um, a digital unless they're doing rough measurements or quick measurements. Um, another thing you can use these, uh, use the zero for there, is again, let's say we're, we're measuring the, uh, the length of the uh, case here, and we want to say, okay, well, what I want to do is I want to, I want to measure this, and I want to know the difference between the length here and the length here. So I will measure the 308, then I will zero it, and then I will measure... 44 and notice it is 852 thousandths uh, smaller than the 308. Okay, so let's take a look at what I think is the more superior tool, which is the dial caliper. And we'll immediately notice that about the only difference other than the, the, uh, the dial readout there is going to be this little uh, set screw right here. And what this does is this adjusts the dial. It works sort of the same way the zero button did on the digital. And uh, so what you'll do uh, if you need to set a, set a re-zero is you'll loosen this and you'll turn the dial like so. Okay. And then lock it now wherever you need it to be. In our case, we're on zero. <clears throat> Reading the measurements is similar to reading the hands on a clock, in a way. It's not difficult to learn. I know it uh, can be intimidating looking at this. There's a lot of numbers and whatnot on it. And, and uh, especially the, the newer guys, they'll get intimidated. And they shouldn't be. So there we go. We've got a, a length on that. And then we'll look at the uh, measurements here. And you'll notice we've got 0 through 9. And then it goes to 1. It'll go zero to nine, then it'll go to two. The small increments here, and I got a little bug flying around, ignore him. Um, the small increments here are tenths, okay? Tenths of an inch. When you get to uh, all the way up to nine and it goes to one, that's going to be an inch. The increments on your dial here are your thousandths, okay? So, <clears throat> in the case here, we go all the way up to nine. We go past nine to one. So already right here we're an inch, that's one, okay, point one. Then we go to our dial, and we look like we're about 49 right there on the dial. Looks like it's in the 49 uh, position. So that case would measure 1.149. Easy enough? I think so. So that's pretty much it, guys. That is how dial calipers work. I want to thank Brent for the questions. I hope this explained uh, everything to him a little better. We appreciate you guys watching. Until next time, remember to chain fire freedom. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out some of our other videos. If you enjoy the channel, why not subscribe? If you want to passively support CloverTac, you can do so by going to CloverTac.com and shopping with one of our wonderful affiliate sponsors.